All right, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Michael here, Shy City Yacker. And in this video, we're gonna do something that a lot of people dread. It's not a lot of fun, but it is very important to do in your kayak. And that is running your electronics, wiring and all that stuff. And the reason I'm doing this now at this point in the season is because I'm adding something new to the entire setup. You ready for this? Live scope. The new LVS 34 Plus is going on the kayak here. So, um, because we're gonna add this, I wanna make sure everything's running properly. I'm redoing my entire wiring system here. Before the way I was running my, my setup was, I just had the, the power cords run into the battery direct. But now because I have multiple things going on here, um, I'm gonna go ahead and install an actual power hub distribution system and rewire everything in, into it so that I can control what units are on. There are times where I might not wanna have the live scope on and I don't wanna eat my battery up. So I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do here, all the things that I have for this kind of install and what I'm, how I'm gonna rig it all. And then I'm gonna do it and we'll see the final results. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look here. Let me show you what exactly I'm gonna be using for the build and, and all the parts, components and all that stuff. Of course, a big part of this is gonna be Yak Attack products. Uh, I've used them for many years. They work just fine. And you're gonna see how I'm gonna use some of the Yak Attack, specifically this mount, lock and load, uh, universal mount. I'm gonna use this to essentially mount the pole that's gonna hold the transducer on it. So this is gonna be a key component um, we've also got um, their through holes. We're gonna need some through holes for this. Uh, we also have a piece of gear track that's gonna go on a spot on the kayak. Uh, and then we also have some of the Yak Power stuff. I am gonna be adding some hull lights. These are blue for when I do a lot of night fishing coming up in the fall for the King Run. We've got, of course, all kinds of wiring to run these uh, power cords, extend them to run the length of the kayak. And the FPV Power Distribution hub is going to be the basically the nucleus of this whole setup. I'm going to run all the power. I really like the products. It's waterproof. Uh, sometimes taking big waves over, water seeps into the hull. So I have confidence that this is going to be good to go. It's super easy to do. It gives me a remote here to turn on four out of the six. Uh, um, I could turn on and off. Two are always on. And this is going to be the main uh, Fish Finder and the NEMA 2000 network where I have my Garmin uh, ReadyCast plugged into. Those will always be on when I turn on the power and then I could turn on the live scope or whatever else I want to plug into it. We've got some additional um, extensions. And then I'm going to be running these USB outlets in here. These are going to be what I'm going to use to power my lights on my kayak and for my camera for filming. These are not going to be plugged into the hub. I'm gonna run these separately. I run them on Nakwa batteries. I just want that to be standalone. It gets its own juice. We also have some Velcro here, industrial strength. We're gonna put some of this on the bottom of the uh, GLS-10 uh, box on the bottom of the battery. So when I put it in there into the hole, it'll stick down in there um, and we won't have no kind of moving around. Extension cables here in case we need it. I could return this if I don't need it. All right, that kind of covers all the little components that we're gonna be using for this whole wiring install for the live scope here. So the first thing I need to do now is go ahead and basically disassemble the current wiring uh, and open up the through holes and pull out all the wires. I'm gonna start completely fresh as if I got the kayak brand new and then run the lines uh, straight fresh like that. Now, one big thing I'm gonna need here to run the lines from the very front of the kayak to the middle, and I'm trying to decide where I wanna put everything. I think I'm gonna put the power distribution center up in the front and then i think i'm gonna run the gls 10 and the battery under the center center um, hatch under the seat so i'm thinking about doing it. so what i'm gonna do right now is i'm just gonna take a moment to put pieces where i think they should go line it up i'm not gonna plug anything up just yet but i'm gonna lay it all out see how i like the configuration just visually and then go ahead and start to do the installation. So I'm not gonna bore you with like doing the actual install. I'm just gonna do it. And as I get each kind of section done, we'll pop back in and I'll show you what it looks like, okay? We've got the NEMA network uh, is plugged in to the main uh, power one and two along with the fish finder itself, my Garmin unit. So those will always be powered on once the battery's connected. We also have on plug B is gonna be our uh, deck lights. I just installed these. So we hit B on the controller right here. So we have some light for the evening, night fishing, doing a lot of night fishing, especially in the fall for the Kings. 
So this should help to light up the deck so I can see a little bit better. It's blue for the nighttime, helps it's better on the eyes. And more importantly, I'm hoping that with this more ambient light in the deck, that uh, the camera captures better night footage. So we'll see how that goes. I'm really happy about these lights. Super easy to install. I may even add two more at some point. Once I know how these work on the water, I might possibly add like another two up closer up front. So then this whole deck area is lit up. Now where we're at here going into, we're gonna get ready to put the black box, the GLS 10. We're gonna probably put it down in here. Um, I'm gonna use some um, heavy duty industrial Velcro, put it on the bottom of it, stick it down in there so it stays put. Oops, things are falling everywhere. Um, and then we gotta run lines. We gotta run the power from the GLS, GLS 10 all the way up to the front to plug into the distribution hub. Uh, then we have to run the network cable from here all the way out over here. So plug into the fish finder. I'm exhausted, it's been an all day thing. I had to go to the store and get some marine goop. Also, let me tell you, I didn't know this beforehand, but there's this thing called the steel fish tape. It's like 11 bucks. You can find it at a hardware store. This made fish, uh, you know, fishing lines through the kayak so much better. So highly suggest getting this um, if you're gonna be running any kind of lines throughout your kayak. It was really, really the best 11, 12 bucks I spent. Um, but let me kind of run you through where we're at with everything. We're like 95% done. I'm just waiting for the mount to arrive, but we got everything else situated. So all I have to do to finish this whole thing up and we'll cut to it, it'll probably be another day or two. I think it comes two days from now. Um, and we'll kind of do the final hookup of everything, but let me show you all the connections and how I did everything. All right, of course I'm running Amped Outdoors for my, all my batteries really, for my um, electronics and for my motor. So big shout out to Amped Outdoors. Here's the wiring on the inside. I got everything pinned up kind of off of the hull. So if I get some water in there, it won't affect it, even though it's all waterproof. Then on the inside, let's see. And there is the FPV uh, distribution power hub all inside. The Nakua is powering the USB hubs because those USB hubs are powering my cameras. I want those to run on a standalone uh, battery. This is a 10 amp hour. I could fill multiple days with it. So I just prefer it to run separately and then let the Amped Outdoors battery just handle all the electronics. That's how I like to run it. And we'll double check over here and we can see that that USB is lit up. It actually tells you the voltage. So we got 12.2 volts on that thing. Uh, I really like this one. Found it on Amazon. I've used them for a while now. Um, and they're high speed, high charging. So if you need to plug your phone in or whatever else, you could charge it. Then we've got the... GLS 10 sitting in, the, sitting in there. Um, again, same situation. I've got Velcro on the bottom of it, so it's not, it's not going anywhere. And I still have some room so I could put my little um, spare kit in there. I keep a spare a drive bag in there, spare prop pins, some essentials in case you're on the water and something breaks, I could reach in there and do some on the water replacements, which is a smart idea to have. So I still got room I can use in there to put whatever else on either side. So I like how that turned out. All the stock wires that came with the uh, live scope actually were long enough to not have to do anything extra with the exception of the transducer cable. I purposely bought an extension for that. Um, here's the Garmin bracket. We've got all the lines running out of here. So what I've done was I've always had this Hobie three-way through hole. There is the Yak Attack through hole right here. Um, really good. These things are really nice. I actually really, really like them. It'd be awesome if they had a three-way version of this. Other than that, that thing is solid and super, super watertight. So I really like that. But we got all our lines running out from these two through holes. There's a total of uh, four wires that go into the back of the unit. Power, transducer, GT56, uh, NEMA network and then the actual network for the GLS 10 the black box for live scope is right there So those are all the connections for the whole thing. All right, that's it for today We're gonna pick back up on this build two days from now when I get the pole mount and we'll finish this thing up Here we are final day of the live scope uh, 34 plus installation on my old town Sportsman autopilot 136. Let me show you 
what it looks like. I'm really excited about this whole thing. So here we go. All right, here it is. Final installation for the new LiveScope 34 Plus on my kayak. You can see it right here. Really happy how this came out. Let's uh, break it down and show you what I did here. So first things first, utilizing the Yak Attack generic base plate mount. Uh, we removed the four inch extension piece that comes with it uh, when you order it. And I just connected it directly to the um, Yak Attack base plate mount, lock and load mount here. Uh, and that's because I didn't need the extra clearance on the side. It fell perfectly right next to the kayak and cleared the uh, paddle and so it fit perfectly so I removed it um, it made it so that the handles a little bit lower it's not so high and it's just really it didn't block my fish finder where you see it's gonna be mounted right there um, so I just have free clearance to move this thing around uh, when I need to so now the way I connected this all was by using the yak attack t-bolt this is the one of the longest sizes that they have I don't know if it's two a little bit more than two inches long and there's more than enough threading that comes out between the board the marine board for the mount and then we just use the little cap right here of course i dropped it that's it it's not going anywhere now you might be wondering what about the other two holes um fishing specialties suggest that you only punch two diagonally it's plenty strong to hold it um and then that way like let's say i'm going into the launch or boat dock if i were to forget about this thing get too close and it smashes um this allows it to kind of like not break everything and maybe break away somewhere else plus if i wanted to um when i pull out the pole mount right here i could just simply twist this around and flip the plate inside if I wanted to to get, kind of get this away from hanging over the kayak. So it gives me that functionality. Um, we lock this in right here so that this doesn't go anywhere. Solid, open that up. Now, one thing that I wanted to do was to make sure that I can remove this and take it off the kayak completely. So this is why we've got all the transducer cable wrapped up here. You don't use zip ties, use like some kind of Velcro. Uh, tie down here. You don't want to use it against the the uh, cabling here. You could damage it if you put those on. So we use a little Velcro straps right here to, to secure it. It's tied around the mount itself, so it's not going to go anywhere. Secure right there. And then we're running this all the way to the connector. If you remember, I ran the extender here to connect the transducer to. That way I can uh, go ahead and remove it all makes it mobile so if there's a day where i want to go fishing and i don't want to use the live scope for whatever reason i can pull it off and leave it or if i'm traveling a long you know drive i can take it off i want to damage that transducer you don't that's the baby right there you don't want to damage that thing so um that's the reason why i went with this kind of uh i don't know for lack of a better word mobile solution be able to pull it off and disconnect it and put it somewhere secure. So if we take a look right here at the fishing specialties mount, it was very easy to do. At first when I looked at it, the instructions were a little unclear, but just by looking at everything, I understood what I needed to do. And it connects simply with a, uh, just a ram ball right here. Um, you can do it this other ways. You can use the actual live scope transducer mount bracket, the metal one, connect it up there and do it that way. But by going this route with the Moran ball on here, um, it simply just allows you to put this in perspective mode. Uh, I could flip it into down mode. And of course, right now it's currently in facing front facing mode. So you can quickly adjust it all. That's how it mounts in there. The, the wiring goes through the center of this itself and right out the top. So it doesn't matter which way to turn it, cabling doesn't twist. That is great right there. Another little thing that I did, a little tip right here, was I went ahead and aligned everything. First off, when I, when I put the transducer on, I used the front holes right here as my point of reference to then align the transducer to be forward. So when all of these are facing this way, it's in forward view out in front of the kayak. I know what's what. I went a step further, and once I aligned everything to the forward, I put a little piece, a uh, little piece of white electrical tape right here, that gives me a visual uh, point to reference and know that I'm pointing forward out of my kayak. And I did the same thing here on the back side. A little piece of tape. I turned it around. I aligned it perfectly with the kayak. I put the tape down there. So a little tip right there for those of you, um, if you want to quickly know. You know, if you're forward facing or back facing, um, and I know that when I have the handle, it's, you know, this is always going to be the front. This is always the front. So 
th for me, that helps me to know exactly where I'm pointing at. That, that's my front. As I twist it around, whatever this is pointing at, that's the direction of the transducer. So when I want to go and do some trolling for salmon, and we're hopefully going to be able to see our spread right here, that's facing backwards to the back of the kayak. And that gives me the point of reference so I know exactly where it's at. Then when I want to take it off, I just flip the tab open, pull it right out. I uh, open the lock and load, take the cabling, disconnect it from the connector right there. And that goes in the car. I'm leaving my Garmin unit right where it's been, right here, right on the main gear track. And then the mount is right here. Now I wanted to give myself some more options in the event that I wanted to say, maybe move this. So what I ended up doing here is I mounted a Yak Attack, once again, of course, a uh, gear track piece. So if I want to, I can actually pull the mount, put it here. And if maybe when I'm doing my trolling, if I need to, uh, maybe this helps out by setting it back a little bit more to get stuff in the uh, view of the live scope. Um, but maybe I don't need to, maybe it'll work right here. I got a lot of testing to do, but never hurts to have options. Plus I can always use this to, to, tie, to put something else down right here. Um, so nice little spot right here on your Sportsman Autopilot. Throw a little, little uh, Yak Attack gear track right there and you can mount all kinds of stuff. It took about four days because I had parts missing, didn't have everything together. I started late in the evenings, but we got it done. I'm super excited about how it turned out. I'm looking forward to getting it out in the water, especially for this fall king run here. Do a lot of videos on this, uh, do some vertical jigging, trolling with it, and just kind of see how it enhances my fishing. Do I notice anything different at all? Um, so be on the lookout for some videos coming out, quite a few videos uh, kind of going through this whole process. Uh, what I will say is that overall it was pretty easy to do. Hardest part, most, most time consuming was just running all the lines and because I wanted to do like upgrade, if you will, my electrical and do a hub and do all of that and run everything very, very cleanly, like really put a lot of effort into it. That took the bulk of the time. Of course, I, I ended up doing this during a hot streak here in Chicago and <sighs> probably should have done this over winter break, but it's done. And we're gonna do a lot of fishing uh, with it now. I'm super excited, as I said. So um, if you have any questions about this, anything I'm using, you know, a lot of this stuff is done with some Yak Attack products here. Um, we set it all up, the fishing specialties, pole mounts, any of that stuff. Feel free to ask. Um, I'll give you all the stuff that I've used to do this if you're looking to do it for yourself. And uh, because I'm sweating profusely over here, please like this video and subscribe. It means a lot for all the effort and, and sweat and tears that I shed putting this together. Thank you. Later.